that's that's a, that's a really good lesson to have. I think we, I think we uh, sometimes forget that, you know. Whereas guys, maybe y'all are taught that, or maybe that's just a natural um, react, or, you know, a natural conditioning. But as women in the workplace, we have to learn that many of us, some don't, but many of us have to learn that. You know, if you need that time, say it. Just be go in there and this has occurred or I have this information. Is this a good time for you? And um, say it. Don't apologize for taking up someone's time. That's why they're there. That's their, <laughs> literally, that's their job. And they're expecting you to do your job. And if there's some news to bring, they want you to bring it. But don't apologize. And, uh, and again, that's a self-limiting belief that many women have um, based upon conditioning or some self-imposed limitations. And I want to kind of pick up right there, too, because the word choices that we use really, I think, uh, have a great impact, not just the word choices and how we communicate with others, but also how we communicate with ourselves. And Erica, that's a great example, um, because you and some people can probably relate to this talking about saying i'm sorry and that there are those times when you apologize to yourself because you have a certain behavior or you're you're not doing a certain thing that you know you should be doing and it's okay to give yourself some grace I, we all understand that but again you don't need to say i'm sorry to yourself uh because you are that person who is a the most accountable for self right and that's i think the biggest piece of self-awareness and chris hit it right on the head when he said, you know, don't just focus on all the positives and don't just focus on all the negatives. You have to look at the whole gamut of what's there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is where I think the true awareness comes from is being open and honest with yourself so that you can evaluate those things. And, you know, Erica, you say you journal, um, but same thing. Um, what do you focus on when you're journaling? And when that one little thought creeps in and you go, oh, I don't want to put that on there because so you actually limiting what you're really exposing your your thought process to uh, because you can say, I don't want to capture that, but I want to capture this because you want to stay on the positive side of it, however that may be. But the key piece there is to capture it all, right? You, you've got to be able to filter through all of those pieces because if you don't, that same negative thing is just going to sit there and it's going to nag because you know it's there, but you want to choose to put blinders on so you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to fix or repair or get beyond it unless you literally just kind of go straight at it. And and that lesson was taught by a man. So mm. when you guys have women in the workplace, you know, especially uh, women who are just entering the workplace or they're trying to grow professionally into where, where you all are. If you see that uh, sometimes, sometimes the person's personality is that you can't address it or help, um, help them in that way. But if it's somebody that is coachable, by all means, share with them lessons that you all learned in dealing with how to maneuver in a corporation or how to maneuver in a law firm or, you know, show them how it's done. Because at least back from when I was growing up, a lot of girls did not receive that uh, confidence, that, uh, coaching on how to approach those situations. So mm -hmm. if you, if you see someone do that, really like a guy or a guy or a woman or man, uh, if they're open to coaching, <laughs> then share with them a way to approach it differently so that that way their career can keep progressing and they're not limiting themselves. I, I don't know how, if somebody's not open to coaching, I don't know what to do with that, but if they're open to it, you know, help them. So I, got a, I got a question, Erica. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I did do that for a long period of time. Um, and so I guess the question for you is with the coaching, mm -hmm. you know, what else helps you get past that? Because, you know, just that little component of I'm sorry or putting yourself down or always feeling like you're, you know, hindering or, or, or causing someone else, whatever it is, how do you do more than change that? Like, how do you, cause it's just not something that's, that's deep. Like that's deep, deep, deep. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, 
if it's coming from someone uh, that you respect, you practice it. You practice it until you feel it, until it becomes natural for you. And it's really a part of really faking it until you really make it. Because if you pretend it, a lot of times people are going based off of perception. You know, they're not, you know, masterful, you know, not ma they may be manipulators, but not masterful manipulate. They're going by perception and a lot of what they believe about themselves and projecting on you. So they don't know <laughs> that you're really not that confident. They don't know. They're not confident themselves. They have their own mess going on. But really practicing. And if you, if you have a mentor who uh, pours information into you and helps you along, giving you some tips on how you can further your career, um, then practice it. Right, you know, and you and you notice lots of times we notice that when we're doing something, we notice that it's weird <laughs> or we should be saying it. So when someone you respect uh, kind of gives you some tips, some different alternatives on how you can handle a situation, practice it and see how it fits. And, and if it makes sense to you, do it. Just keep practicing it that way until it just becomes automatic for you to react like that. That's what I've had to do. And there are many a times when I go places and I'll be, and I've shared that with y'all before, I'll be at home or I'll be in my car before I even get out. 